Greetings, Fright Nights. Uh, it's your old pal, Count Dracula from the planet Dracula, and we're doing another vlog this week, uh, this time about uh, Everly, a movie we felt was extremely unfairly maligned, along with its director, Joe Lynch. Uh, hey, man, Joe, if you're listening, we fucking loved your movie. Hey, how you doing? Yo. Um, we saw Everly. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I had seen it before, but I, I really wanted Jack to watch it so that we could sit down and talk about it. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. It is. Um, so for really those of you who don't know, uh, Ever Everly is the new Selma Hayek movie where she um, basically is trapped in this one room while every fucking Yakuza in Japan is fucking barreling down on her and wants to kill her. Um, and so she's got to survive the night and somehow get the money she has to her child so her child can live and escape and get away while every Yakuza, like I said, every fucking Yakuza in Japan just wants her dead. The movie is very, very Mike by way of John Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 if you cross John Woo with Mike and, um, and Die Hard, it's also very Die Hard to the point where it's also set on Christmas and that's part of the motif of the movie. Yeah, the basic story is uh, this young lady who is the mistress of the big Yakuza boss, uh, something happens and she feels the need to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. You can tell that this is a woman who has been brutalized. She has been gang raped. She is not doing well. She's in a bad place. But at the last minute, she decides that she's going to kill everyone. Yeah, yeah. Fuck this. I'm not going to die. I'm going to take them all with me if I have to die. You know, and so she fucking, fucking does. Yeah. <laughs> fucking takes care of business. You know, like this, this, this is a, uh, of God, like, I've seen people online who are like shipping John Wick and Everly. And, oh, I get, uh, I, it, that's not hard to see why. Yeah, yeah. And I would totally watch that movie. I would totally watch John Wick and fucking Everly, like, take out, like, the Chinese triads or something. Yeah. I would, I would watch that. Totally. <laughs> I mean, that movie would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So amazing, yeah. I you know, a lot. Yeah, there were a lot of people like calling this movie sexist. Oh, just shut up! Are, are you no. kidding me? The entire movie no. is, is about a, a woman taking hold of her own. Oh, God, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's about it's about a woman protecting herself and her family. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Fucking 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 hard is sexist. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he steps on glass. It's so sexist. Yeah. What the oh, fuck ever. So, there are also so people calling this exploitative trash. And the only reason why they're saying that is because it's gory. <sighs> hey, it is gory. And, and fuck yeah, it's gory. So yeah. is RoboCop, motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, and it's about RoboCop levels. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, that's well. about it. It's not like it's not like trauma levels. It's like for, for Yeah, yeah. You, you, people getting shot up, some blood splatter or whatever, some head shots, some... So there's there there's there's a shot of a bunch of people in an elevator and she fucking tosses a uh, a grenade in and then you see the blood like come through the doors as they shut as they shut, you know it's it's it, it that's the other thing is that it's also it's also like like a little over the top kind of oh, violence super over the top you know because as she's killing these guys and girls who have come to kill her, basically the the structure of the movie is this. Everly kills someone, some, something happens, someone else comes into the room to kill her. And as the movie progresses, the people who come in to kill her get progressively and progressively more insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go from just like, you go from, you go from some thugs to like some, uh, some hookers who also live in the building, but they got a text like, hey, anyone who takes her out will get like a million dollars or something like that. So they, they all come in and some of them are like, like kung fu fighting hookers. It's fucking amazing. Um, and then, and then you have like, uh, 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 the police show up and a SWAT team fucking storms the, uh, the thing. Cause the SWAT team is part of, is in the pocket of, of the crime Lord that, 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 that quote unquote owns her and that she's taking back from taking back her, uh, her identity and her life from. And, uh, uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to give away the whole thing, but there's, there's a villain Oh my god. Who makes an entrance in this movie. He is the greatest thing ever. His name is the Sadist. And he brings with him his masochist. masochist. I'm not gonna say more than that. Yeah. Because but that's my favorite part of the movie. And I gotta I gotta agree. 
when he showed me, when Josh showed me the movie, he was like, dude, I just realized, I bet Joe Lynch really wanted this part played by Takeshi Miike. Oh, God, I almost guarantee it. <laughs> because he, he feels a lot like Miike's cameo in Hostel 1. Um, when, when Miike shows up, it's just, Ooh, yeah. just like, y'all gonna want to go in there. It's a real party. It's just like... <laughs> You know, um, and, and he's kind of got that same feel. Um, and then the movie just keeps oh getting more insane. God. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't stop once it starts. You know, like there's there's some lulls, there's some moments where where it slows down for like he gets into con she gets into contact with her mom and her daughter, who she hasn't seen in four years because she was essentially kidnapped and held captive. And 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 she's trying to get this money to them because she knows that they're in danger because. Now that she's killed all these Yakuza, they're targets too. So she wants to get this money to them so they can get out of the country and fly off to like some place like America where they could they could they could they could they could hide out and hold out. You know, so anywhere, anywhere, as long as it's not Japan. <laughs> Which is where I'm assuming this takes place. They never really specify. No, they don't really specify, but I'm, it's it's hard. I can't imagine this know. many Yakuza anywhere else. Yeah, like, it would have to be, like, Japan or Seattle or San Francisco. Yeah. But it's, like, indefinable city. I mean, obviously, it is a place where there's, like, some Hispanic people. Yeah, that's true. You know, because... That's true, because Selma Hayek and, 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 and there's a and her couple... her family, very, his, and, and very there's, Hispanic. And there's some white people. There's there's just that one guard who walks in after after a bunch of the hookers are killed. It's just like, that's a lot of a dead, dead horse. horse. You haven't earned the right to call them that. Yes. Oh, uh, you bitch! I'm nobody's bitch. bitch. <laughs> Badass. <laughs> Anyone calling this movie sexist? Are you kidding me? That's like that's oh whatever. I I, th I think it's a uh, uh, Bet at the Sage who has the term like 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 Valkyrie bitch like that. Oh yeah, that's what Everly is in this. Yeah, absolutely. Like she goes from like scared, I'm gonna kill myself, my life is over, to just no, I'm gonna kill everything. And I'm does... going Sarah Connor on this shit. Yeah, like... <laughs> and it does feel like it does have uh, because of the way the movie escalates. It does feel like an anime. Yeah, yeah, it does. It really does. It, it has a complete anime feel. Not just because Japanese yeah, people are in it. Definitely like the ones that we were doing like back in like the 90s. Yes. Yes. You know, where it got super fucking violent. Yes. That's, that's when that shit was best. Absolutely. I've seen some people call this movie because there's the, because because of the, some of the scenes with like the sadists and stuff like that. I've seen some people call this movie torture porn and what I find odd about that is that it's not uncommon in action movies for there to be a scene where the hero gets caught by the bad guy, strung up in some way, and then has to endure some sort of some sort of pain or punishment um, until he escapes and, and heroically kicks some ass. Yeah, we um, used to do that all why, the time. Why is this torture porn, but Casino Royale isn't? Why? Casino Royale. Well, like John Wick has the scene oh, where God, fucking we're yeah. fucking uh, uh not Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe gets captured and he's basically beat to a fucking pulp, which is torture. He can't move. You know, yeah, uh, they're literally torturing. Yeah, him. yeah. Before yeah. before being shot to death, but no one called torture porn on that. You know, people don't call Reservoir Dogs torture porn, so I don't understand why this movie singled out be, being singled out for that beyond the fact that it's a graphic action movie. I have no idea. You know, I I, I don't get it. I don't, is it because it's a girl? People it can't handle be. a girl it in that situation. It, it, well, it might be that same thing as that that classic like trope of like people are get much more upset when there's they see like an attractive woman being harmed. So than like 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 anything and, else. And here's the funny thing: she she really she she has like one thing done to her in the entire thing versus uh versus fucking Casino Royale where that guy's balls get fucking destroyed. Yeah, in that scene, I don't care if he's James Bond; he has no testicles anymore. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, well, it's one of it's one of those weird things where like for some reason. Uh, people are way more sensitive to when something like that is done by a woman. And I think it's one of the reasons that people don't take as well to the female action hero. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because seeing them in peril has the double-edged sword of like, hey, it's more effective when you see them in peril because you're more likely to be like, oh my God, a girl's in peril. But on the other hand, that also means you're more likely to be 
affected by it. So if you're one of those snobs who like fucking goes like, oh, I spit on your grave is the worst fucking movie ever because yeah. it promotes torture or whatever, then obviously you're going to do that when you watch an action movie. And it's just like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, no matter how much power the woman has, the fact that she's put in any position of weakness is going to be... Fucking Doomsday has a scene where she's captured and put in the chair. Oh, that's yeah. right. You I know? totally forgot about that. You yeah. know, like, it's... <laughs> I totally forgot about it. But Doomsday, another movie you should watch. Really Doomsday's good. awesome. Doomsday's got another Valkyrie bitch yeah. character. It's <laughs> fucking badass. I love that movie. Um, yeah, it's weird. I, I, I always find it weird because, like, when I was a kid, I grew up with movies where the you know the the Valkyrie bitch was was kind of riding high. Mm -hmm. Terminator, Aliens, Terminator Two. Uh, all happened relatively quickly, and even a lot of other movies tried to mimic that. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we get to about the ninety, we get to like the mid nineties, and that stopped. Yeah, we yeah. stopped doing it. Well, that's what that's when the strong independent woman thing like took over, where it's just it's not really. Oh, about that's action. right. Yo, that's mm -hmm. what replaced it. Like basically got replaced by like the barbed wire kind of bullshit. Yeah, you know, which you're like. Look, Pamela Anderson looks great, but I'm not buying it. I'm yeah. not buying it when it was like Lin Linda. You buy Lin Linda Hamilton. You buy Sigourney Weaver. You know, you do not buy Pamela Anderson. Well, well, that's one of those weird things. You get this like really cutesy girl who's really attractive and and really good looking and looks good in front of the camera, but then you try to put her in this like hardened role of like the hardened badass and you don't buy it because they're just they just don't give that it's it's like it's like trying to put Shia LaBeouf in that role it just oh it, yeah it, no that would not work it, you know like you don't buy it you know whereas like in this movie like Selma Hayek has this badass edge to her just naturally like you you, you buy her attitude like she won't take some shit so when she puts that on for this movie it it works you know, yeah, same with same with Rona Mitra in, in Doomsday and, and same with someone like 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 um Sigourney Weaver. Like she's 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 good at that. Yeah. You know? I don't know what else to I don't know what else to say about Everly except watch it. It's Hell yeah. amazing. If it's if amazing if you movie. are like if you're like us and you like ultra violent action movies and stuff like that, like fucked up anime or or just Japanese cinema in general, um, then then this is this is definitely a must. If you are the kind of person who really wants more kick-ass women in films, then this is another good example of kick-ass woman who is really not sexualized like at all. No, so that's no, the no, thing no, that no. bothers you. This no. movie doesn't do that. Like any sexuality that comes across Everly is just Selma Hayek's natural sexiness. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Selma Hayek just naturally looks good. So if you like looking at her walking away like the, the the movie does not male gaze her at all yeah there's like but, one shot where it's possible like 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 there's one possible shot where they might have done that but it's such a cool shot you're like <laughs> yeah 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 like that shot's just really fun <laughs> you know that, that shot to me is the equivalent of to bring up casino royale again a fucking daniel craig coming out of the ocean <laughs> and like this fucking glistening abs in slow motion you're like that 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 was done specifically to pop some boners and some lady boners. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but the thing is, I'm like, you know what? I'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I'm not complaining. Cool. Fucking Daniel Craig is a hot dude. Like, who cares? He looks good in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's just very strange how like I I think I I often wonder and I I don't I don't want to presume because that's getting into the realm of like. Uh, things that we, you know, so social Absolutely, politics yeah. and things that we can't prove. But I often wonder whether it isn't our natural inclination to be more distressed if a young woman is in peril, which is kind of creating, uh, which which is the, the, the hard shell that keeps us from being able to really appreciate movies where a woman is the hero in the same way that a male character is a hero, mm -hmm. you know, through physical action yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and violence, to be totally honest. You know, like, absolutely. I mean, know. like outside of the uh, the plot for this movie is basically taken if the girl herself saved herself. Like, mm -hmm. like Taken's all yeah. about dad coming to save daughter from sex slavery. Well, here's a movie where daughter saves herself. Like, <laughs> um, and I don't know why daughter who saves herself is considered more sexist than dad saves daughter. Like uh, I, I think, it, I th I think actually it has a, a lot to do with that old. Uh, I, 
I almost want to say cinema snob, but I don't mean Brad Jones. I mean like actual like actual fucking, cinema snobs, actual the people he's making snob. fun of. Yeah, um, who believe that there's like high cinema and low cinema where I find myself going like high cinema and low cinema. If you're talking about stylistic differences, sure. But if you're talking about like the quality of content, fuck you. Because I have seen a lot of art. I love art house movies. I have seen some bullshit. What I often find is funny about that concept is that often the, 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 the current days high cinema is reveling in the yesteryear's low cinema. Well, like, best like, movies do that. Like, like yeah. Tarantino is considered high cinema, but all his movies are all old exploitation films. Yep. You know, like, almost all of them are homaging that kind of stuff. They're obviously all, also homaging stuff like Kubrick and stuff like that, but generally, it's fucking the kind of films you would see in a Grindhouse film. Yeah. I don't... Eh. So, yeah, and those are the kind of... I'll be honest, I, I, I love low low brow content that is given that high brow polish <laughs> is why I Me think the guest is so amazing. <laughs> <coughs> I'm right there with yeah. you. And that that's kinda like that's the way I like a movie like Everly. It it it's a movie that is very much the kind of low brow brow exploitation, like over the top action movie, but it is done with a master's touch, you know. Of someone who who understands these movies better than than anyone to the point where it almost it almost feels like it's like it's like a, like like one or two tiers just below Tarantino like in terms of what it does yeah yeah um obviously Joel Tarantino's is great obviously yeah. Tarantino's like fucking god up here of that kind of stuff and he's like down here just a little bit you know it's like not quite god but great you know yeah one of the one of the great mortal heroes who who may yet ascend to mount Olympus. I hope so I hope so and who should see Everly well look you either want to see a woman shoot blow up kill and fucking get revenge on a hotel full of freaks or not yeah that, that about sums it up Man, like if look, if you don't like Everly, I don't know where we're gonna see eye to eye on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love this movie. This is one of my favorite movies movie. of the year so far. It's a great movie. You sh you should you can you can go in just purely. I give you, I absolve you. I give you permission to enjoy this movie. Um. My my wife really loved this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she loved it. Like she 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 was calling it like a John Woo movie with a chick. It was. Yeah. yeah which is exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're a Mike fan, you should watch this movie because Joe Lynch is doing a bit of a Mike. Yeah, yeah. Uh man, no. Like I I I've, I've seen Joe Lynch movies before and I've liked them, but like this was the one where I'm yes. like, oh now he is now he is I'm ascended. looking out for this guy. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely like like up the bar with this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, agreed. definitely. All right. Well, I'm sure we've offended some people and delighted others. <laughs> I'd apologize, but I'm not sorry. Lick my balls. Lick my balls. That's a lot of dead horse. Lick my balls. Lick my balls. <laughs>